Let's Talk VDML with KJR. Well, uh, good afternoon from Southport State High School. Today, uh, you're joining us for our latest episode in the Validation Driven Machine Learning series from KJR. And today, I have with me a special guest from uh, of KJR and an important friend, uh, Dennis Fay from Salty Monkeys. Thanks for having and me. Leader of the uh, uh, illustrious Marine Debris Task Force. Uh, what we're going to talk about today, mate, is, or what I'd love to talk to you about, is discussing uh, probably the most important part of our validation driven machine learning process, mm-hmm. and that is the problem, yep. understanding the problem and understanding the context around that. Uh, before we get further down the track, though, would you like to just start with? Uh, Who's Dennis Fay? Where are you from? A little bit of an introduction. Thanks for having me. Uh, Yeah, so Dennis Fay, born and raised in the Torres Strait Island um, and was there most of my life before I travelled around everywhere and uh, coming back to the Torres Strait to to start the Salty Monkeys, what started off as a bit of a a joke and and a bit of fun and laughter out adventuring in the Torres Strait then becomes something serious. So it's now a a brand that's passionate about our amazing ocean um, above and below and we capture all that content Um, but we're also passionate about my home the beautiful Torres Strait Island and its people Um, and that kind of led us into some impactful work and includes working with yourself um, KJR in a collaborative project which I'm sure we'll talk a little bit more about Um, and yeah and that's pretty much who we are in a nutshell we create content and now we're doing we've got a line of product which is going to include dive products as well soon and we're doing uh, environmental projects as well which is the marine debris task force yeah all right well before we jump into the marine debris task force uh, a couple of things so happy to give you a plug on the it's a, definitely a good youtube channel to, to yep. watch if you're interested in that sort of stuff and the other one I'd, uh obviously the product line but uh did you want to just quickly talk about the sustainability side of some of the products you're looking at cool so we started off creating products due to demand from our social platforms Um, But as we started the journey, we wanted to start to take care of what's obviously our main thing is the environment around the Torres Strait and especially the ocean. So we wanted to start with the small steps of practicing what we preach, uh, which led us into that kind of sustainability thing, um, where we initially started off looking at creating uh, or producing less plastic in our packaging, which kind of went from plastic into uh, recycled papers for our packaging, but then we wanted to continue that process and that led us to looking at creating or implementing recycled materials within our products. We've, we've designed and created our very own fins made of flippers, which is made out of recycled plastics. Um, some of our products now incorporate recycled polyester or materials, but we're also looking at how we could do in our projects is looking at using the marine debris waste potentially as a resource and create products um, in the Torres Strait. Yeah, uh, and that's actually a really good segue. So um, the marine debris and recycling uh, of those materials into things like your fin, mm-hmm. uh, the fins that you're using. So that brings us to the Marine Debris Task Force. Can you tell us a little bit about that and what drove the, uh, the idea behind it and what it's all about? Well, it first stemmed with uh, trying to do something small. We're very community driven because of the support from, or the strong support from the community. So we wanted to actually get back in the community and do some activities that um, promote positive initiatives within it. And so environment was one thing that we could do with the small steps that we started. We wanted to kind of take those bigger steps and that led us to the Marine Debris Task Force opportunity. Um, and that there we received some funding and we're partnered with the Torres Strait Island Regional Council to do the Marine Debris Task Force which is, uh, basically for us is to, to conduct a number of beach cleanups, collect quality data to then be able to, to look for a sustainable and viable solution in the Torres Strait to deal with the marine debris and ghost nets um, in the Torres Strait. And to enhance that now we've got a partnership with yourself, KJR, to, to make um, that project a lot better with the data, AI, and everything else around that yeah. space. I, I think the things that stood out for me when we sp- first talked about this was, first up, the, the project perfect for collecting large data across the beaches, 
<laughs> excellent opportunity for us to be chasing uh, survey data along the beaches and using AI machine learning to identify the density. I think it's a great, great idea to include the tech. Is it something you thought about before you started? Not, the not at the level that I think when we first started. All we wanted to do was maybe have some aerial imagery to help with kind of the reporting process, not the data itself. And it wasn't until we sat down and had a bit of a chat to actually see you know, what um, potential we could actually do to really enhance it a lot more. And that's when we got excited and um, I think one beer turned into a couple. Yeah, I was going to say, that, that was that, that 30 minute chat that went for about that, three hours. Yeah. yeah, a lot longer than we <laughs> thought. Um, and that's where I guess we started to realise I think we can take this a lot more than what we wanted because my first chat was going to be about selecting a drone that would help us with what we were going mm. to do and then talking to yourself it's like I think you can do a lot more than just take photos we can you know develop and bring something that's going to be really beneficial to the whole project and that's where we started off yeah yeah so I guess so from that we got a good understanding quite quickly from yourself about what the probe problem was and the, and the context mm -hmm. of the problem so we thought oh this is an excellent opportunity for us to roll in and, and use, in this case, drones to collect the data and then, you know, it's all about the data pipeline and the AI and machine learning. But before we launch into that, and this is part of the VDML process, is you know, we've got to understand the context of the problem. So it's not as easy as just rocking up to the beach and flying a drone. There's some challenges. Mm -hmm. um, I've got an inkling about a few of them, but maybe for the audience, do you want to talk about what some of the challenges we might be facing and what I might not have known about uh, yeah. until I experienced it firsthand for myself? Exactly. So when we really wanted to understand it, we, as a part of the Marine Debris Task Force, set out um, our operation in phases. And that first phase that we did, um, which you were a part of, was a reconnaissance or a scoping phase mm. where we had to travel around the whole Torres Strait yes to understand what we're dealing with and what we kind of do um, from the get-go and build the foundations upon that and yes we did find a, a fair few challenges along the way um, you know um, <laughs> we could probably tell that story if you wanted to about um, our wonderful walk around the island while we wait for the tide to come back in <laughs> yeah and, and, and the eventful things that led to that um, but yes, there's some of the challenges that we're facing is we could look at uh, even the, the biosecurity thing where unlike anywhere else that has the same issue of marine debris, um, we've got one process where the challenge of the biosecurity threat that we have to go through to get the, the debris offshore as it is at the moment. Yeah, which so means what we're talking about here is like you can go and pick up the rubbish, mm -hmm. chuck it in the bag, you can sort it out, but you yep. can't just then ship that straight back to the exactly. mainland. Exactly. Right? Yeah, there's um, uh, pests and disease threats that could affect um, yeah. the mainland of Australia. So that's a barrier to the recycling process. Exactly, and a costly one at that. that. Yeah. 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 Uh, what about in terms of, so one of the things I learned was, ah, oh, there's 200 islands across you know, the Torres Strait or thereabouts, mm -hmm. and you know, they're pretty in close proximity. I think, oh, this should be pretty easy, but very quickly I learned that well there's no easy way to get around you know you're That's kind right. of restricted to small vessels there's not a lot of airports around air travel is expensive um, that, that's certainly one I, I found mm -hmm. uh, one of the ones I was surprised about was the complexity in terms of stakeholder engagement so do you want yes. to maybe talk about the complexity of dealing in the Torres Strait with different yep. agencies in the community well straight off the bat as you're in the Torres Strait because we're an island, there's multiple cluster groups, right? So every group have different traditional owner um, groups within each cluster, but then for each island have their own traditional owners, elders and organisations that you kind of have to go through that whole process of engaging with them, getting the right permissions to even go to those islands and cluster groups. So that's one of them. Um, we've got multiple organisations to help coordinate all of the, the operations within the Torres Strait for everything. Um, so there's quite a few people that we need to, to go and seek the, the approvals to even do what we need to do and that's, that's like you said, there's, there's multiple stakeholders mm. that we need to do which is quite complex sometimes and if you don't really know who's who in the whole thing, um, you know, you might miss one which can be, you know, a little bit more difficult to deal with mm. Um, mm. at a later date when you yeah. start doing your stuff. Yeah, definitely. It's, uh, it's a real complex patchwork or collage. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
of different organisations. I, I did really though, so I did get the chance to go there. I really yeah. enjoyed the energy that the Salty Monkeys brand brings yeah. into the Torres Strait. Uh, and from that, the amount of community participation yes. makes it a really cool project. <laughs> yes, exactly. And I think we had some good community engagement activities when you were up there, which is really cool because I don't think it's ever been done before. And it was really exciting to see how many kids came out of one small island yeah. just with that, with that there and, and all oh, the community. I was only 15 on the island, I think it was a, I think it was 10. <laughs> 10. 10. We'll have 10 participants in, in this, so <laughs> you know, we'll be able to spread out the, the people across the drones and do all these activities <laughs> and then 150 people or whatever, the whole community <laughs> rocks up and we're like, okay, that's a bit more than 10. Yeah. Yeah, but we was, which was a great testament to show, you know, the community involvement and, and eagerness to to get in and be a part of it. Yeah, uh, I, I really love how you know, this kind of technology here is so powerful, but mm -hmm. it's now so much more accessible to community. Yep. And to see community engaging like that, it means that AI machine learning is now, you know, the fingertips of community. Mm -hmm. It's upskilling community. It's giving employment options, wealth building options, and an opportunity for them to participate in the husbandry of their own land and sea country. Uh, another question or comment I'd like to talk about is, is the scale of the problem. It's always important. So, okay, we have a problem. How big is the problem in Torres Strait when it comes to marine debris? Well, all you have to do is, I mean, look at this whole thing globally and understand that it's a global issue and you know it, it affects us just as much elsewhere and we're dealing with it in the tons. I can give you a quick example so I had another little community engagement with the young group on one island where we did approximately 200 to 300 meters of a shoreline cleanup. We got about just under 20 garbage bags fulls of debris mostly plastic bottles drink bottles. Out of the 20 in that short space we looked at um, we've identified that there was only about two to three pieces that was local and the rest was foreign. Um, but we're dealing with that across the whole Torres Strait. And if you look at the Torres Strait, it's almost like a funnel. Mm. You've got two large land masses, a lot of islands that come through and that'll pretty much act like a filter. It captures everything. So we're looking at tons and tons to a point that if we collect it all, we don't have the real estate or the land to actually deal with it at this current state with it there is just too much mm. and the only option at us for the moment is to to sort it all out and ship it offshore mm. and that's where that biosecurity mm. measure has to come through so there's two options we either fumigate it which is with toxic fumes or freeze it for at least 48 hours to arctic temperature so that nothing can actually live in that so we're looking at a very very big problem where would that get done Good question. So I think you'd have to have freezers and that at this point in time they used to freeze them on Horn Island. Sea Swift also has freezer facilities but that's quite a costly process as well. Um, and when we're looking at the larger scale of, of everything so the only um, thing that they've done at the moment is with the containers for change where they've had to do the freezing process to then get it offshore to resell that product. And when you're having a look at 10 cents per bottle um, and then the costs around shipping it offshore yep. and then freezing it, it comes quite a costly process. Well, if we take it back further, you know, Massig Island, mm -hmm. York Island as it used to be called, uh, the time to get it from Massig Island to Horn Island where mm -hmm. the freezing facilities, what's that in terms of a boat ride for that bottle? Quite a, quite a process, yeah. Fair a few hours a on a slow few boat. Hours. Yep. Fair few hours, yep. So that 10 cents of recycling, you know, you're probably going to use that. It'll cost more in fuel than it is for that 10 cents, definitely. Yeah. And you saw how much yourself when we yeah. did the thing on Wednesday Island where I just asked you the question was on how much how you would you? see yeah. on the beach and what was that yeah, like? I think I said, oh, we'll probably find a 100 bottles or so uh, across the beach. And I think we found 100 bottles in the first 25 metres. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that gives you an idea on the scale that we're dealing yeah. with and how big the problem is. Yeah, I think the heartbreaking thing about that though is we have these small communities that, and I was talking to you about it when you were younger, you, you don't remember there being marine debris really on the beaches and the marine debris that you found was, you know, it was a, like a scavenger hunt. You'd be looking for cool things to find. Mm -hmm. And nowadays you've got this a community of 100 people on an island dealing with tons of rubbish that mm -hmm. 
isn't theirs. It's come no. from overseas and they're just lumped with this problem and there's no one there to deal with it. Exactly. Great opportunity to use tech to scale. And yeah, and yeah, and I think with what we're doing, we already saw within that first phase on how beneficial and efficient it is to use that technology versus us walking around an island while we wait for the tide to come up. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, for everybody, we might have missed a tide. We might have got stuck and marooned on a tropical para. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a good, a good example though. So we surveyed that island, I think it was in about 25, 45 minutes maybe. And because we missed the tide, we were stuck there for a bit. So we actually walked the island rather mm -hmm. than using a drone survey. Well, how long does it take us? Over two hours. Two, over two hours to walk around that. And we drank all of our water. We were tired by the end of it. It was 30 something degrees and 90% humidity. So yeah, it was definitely not as easy as just changing a battery and keep going. So no. it, yeah. it would take pretty much, that would take the whole day for us to really do it yeah. effectively on ground as, as opposed yeah. to what the drone could do. In and that was just a survey. So then you've got to come back and do the cleanup. Yes, that's right. Yeah. All right. So. I think that is pretty much time for us. That's a really great insight into what seemed like a pretty straightforward problem. Oh, yeah, we're going to use some drones to do some survey of a beach too. Mm -hmm. How powerful AI machine learning is and how accessible it is to really enhance the problem. But before mm -hmm. you go diving headlong into it, you've got to understand right. the problem. There's a lot more exactly. to it. Exactly. And I think what we're doing with the project um, is going to really be able to also, you know, for the future, help us prepare better for what we're dealing with to get out there. It just makes it a lot more efficient and effective. So right. I'm looking forward to it all as well. And I'm hoping that we get dried up and stay have to do another romantic walk because that was actually a quite <laughs> was fun, fun process. So I'm looking forward it to was. that again. It was. I might yeah. have to purposely I, make up another excuse to get I've, dried on an island somewhere. I've still got that conch on my desk. It's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, mate, thanks for coming down uh, to Southport. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for being part of the KJR team and thanks uh, for you. Oh, chat, Thanks for having me and I'm looking forward to everything that we get to do in the future. Cool. Cool.